Hello, welcome to day 47 of our 52 days journey in the book of Jeremiah. Um, we're getting close to the end of the journey. This is the last seven days. And I think that as we end this journey on the 52nd day, there should be communion. We should have, we should break bread, you know, as we end this journey and further to you know, hold on to covenant as we journey through 2024. The reason we're studying and going through the book of Jeremiah at this time is because Jeremiah is the 24th book of the Bible and has a word in season for the year 2024. But that does not mean that Jeremiah has no relevance outside of 2024 because even Jesus quoted from this book. This is a book for all time and for all season. And after 2024, Jeremiah is still the word of God for all people, for all time, you know, wherever. But every book of the Bible is a word in season to seasons that corresponds to the number of that book. So 2024 has something to do with the book of Jeremiah. And we're going to see the book of Jeremiah play out in the year 2024. Um, in the previous video, uh, the 46th day, we began, Jeremiah spoke against Egypt. Actually, in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is prophecy against 10 nations. Prophecy against 10 nations. The, the if you look at 10, the significance of 10, 10 is about the kingdoms of this earth, the kingdoms of men. Men have 10 fingers, 10 toes. So when you see the number 10, you know that this is speaking about man. So the prophecy of Jeremiah, you know, was to 10 nations. Judah, Judah occupied Jeremiah chapter 2 to Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 45 was a personal word to Jeremiah's secretary, Baruch. From 46 to 51, Jeremiah began to speak to nations, nine other nations, nine nations. You are talking about Egypt, you are talking about the Philistines, we're talking about Moab, we're talking about Ammon, you're talking about Edom and uh, Hazor, Damascus and Elam, and then the great Babylon. These were the nations that, you know, Jeremiah spoke to. So in the 46th, uh, the video of the 46th day, we focused on what God uh, told Jeremiah to declare concerning Egypt. But it's important that Besides just reading history or reading prophecy, that we are able to make applications. What does Egypt mean to people who live in 2024? What does Babylon mean to those who live in 2024? What I mean, when we're talking about Philistines, like we're going to be looking at the video. I mean, in the video today, I'm going to be sharing about the word against the Philistines. What do these things mean? I know that. Um, People might think that Jeremiah 47 has something to do with the war at Gaza because Gaza and Ashkelon are mentioned there. But I believe that those there can be spiritual applications, but not that the Palestinians are the ancient Philistines. But one thing in common, one thing that they have in common, that they're both, you know, vowed, avowed enemies of Israel, the Philistines, you know. It's like swore to deal with Israel and um, the Palestinians, you know, have the same kind of thing also happening. So, but we're going to look at these prophecies and see what we can make out of them. Jeremiah 47 is the second shortest chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 45 has just five verses and chapter 47 has seven verses. So, we would look at the scriptures to see what we can make of them. 
And then I'm going to say something about these nations that we're beginning to see as we get to the end of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 47. <clears throat> the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, the prophet, against the Philistines before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. We're not talking about the Gaza that we see. This is something that Jeremiah prophesied in his days. This must have been something that happened around 609 BC. So, but always bear in mind the spiritual significance that, yes, although the Palestinians might not be the ancient Philistines, but there is something that they have in common as the adversaries of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Behold, waters rise out of the north and shall be an overflowing flood. They shall overflow the land and all that is in it, the city and those who dwell within. Then the men shall cry and all the inhabitants of the land shall wail. All the noise of the strangers, the stomping hoofs of his strong horses and the rushing of his chariots at the rumbling of his wheels. The fathers will not look back for their children because of the day that comes to plunder all the Philistines, to cut off from Tyre and Sidon every helper who remains, for the Lord shall plunder the Philistines, the remnant of the country of Kaftor. Baldness has come upon Geza. Ashkelon is cut off with the remnant of their valley. How long will you cut yourself, O oh, you sword of the Lord? How long until you be quiet, until you are quiet? Put yourself up into your scabbard. Rest and be still. How can it be quiet, seeing the Lord has given it a charge against Ashkelon and against the seashore that there he has appointed it? Okay, so this is the prophecy of Jeremiah against the Philistines. And let's do some application right now. What does this mean to us who live in this generation and in this season. Now, there's a way to understand all these enemy nations that Jeremiah spoke about close to the end of the book. Let's begin with Egypt. Who were the Egyptians? Egyptians were the first, real first enemies of Israel who vowed that Israel will not exist as a nation who vowed that Israel will never be free, who vowed that Israel will never go to the promised land because Moses came to Pharaoh and said, Thus says the Lord, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. So without what God did to Egypt, there would have been no Israel. So these are the oldest enemies of God's people, but now getting revived. What that simply means is that in this season 2024, the Lord will be fighting those ancient enemies that are getting revived, the enemies that said you would never be free, the enemies that say you would never serve God, the enemies that said you will never go into God's destiny for your life, that's what Israel, I mean, that's what Egypt represents. You're going to see the, 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 how this, all these nations, the, the place they hold in the, in the you know, life of God's people. Of course, the, 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 the Jews, where it all started, that the first 44 chapters or first 45 chapters, Jeremiah was speaking to the, the, the Jews. What does that mean? These were people who belonged to God, but who said we will not be God's own. We will not serve God. They are God's people who said we will not be God's people. And God said, okay, I'm going to deal with you because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So that's why that this year and this season is a little dangerous to be God's own and also not be God's own because we're in a season where God is reclaiming all that belongs to him. So here we have Israel, 
God's people who said, we won't be God's people. We won't listen to him. We won't do what he says. And God said, okay, I'm out for you. I gave you the promised land and I'm going to take it from you. Now, after he's done that, he's facing Egypt. Egypt were the enemies who said, you will never be a nation. You will never be free. You would never live in the promised land. And God had to deal with them to make Israel a nation. And now in chapter 47, we are looking at the Philistines. Who were the Philistines? I'd like you to follow what is happening here in this book. Israel, God's people who said, we will not be God's people. Egypt who said, we don't know God. We will never allow the purpose of God concerning Israel to happen. Now the Philistines were enemies of Israel in the promised land who said, we will never allow you to enjoy the promised land. Ancient enemies of Israel. We know that it was at the hands of the Philistines that Samson died. Samson was raised to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines in the days of the judges. He perished at their hands. The sons of Eli perished at the hands of the Philistines. That's when Eli also died. It was these Philistines that took the ark of God away from Israel, kept it in the house of their Dagon. It had never happened before. Seized the ark of God, took it away, and God began to fight for him. But this ark also had to return. It was at the hands of the Philistines that Saul and his three sons died. David said, how are the mighty fallen? It was from among the Philistines that the Goliath, you know, the Goliath, the giant of the Philistines came up. But when David came, David fought a decisive battle against the Philistines and brought down the sons of the giants in 2 Samuel chapter 21. So he fought the battle that brought the Philistines. And so we're talking about ancient enemies of God who vowed that Israel will never enjoy the promised land. Egypt said Israel will never go to the promised land. Philistines says you will never enjoy the promised land. We're going to take this land again from you. So as we proceed, we're going to see what part that each nation played in the lives of the children of Israel concerning land. And so what we read and God said, I'm going to raise a storm. Water is going to cover this land of Philistines and uh, they are going to be, you know, completely destroyed and, uh, you know, conquered just to establish the counsel of God. So part of it is that Every ancient enemy that is getting revived in this season, because we no longer have the Philistines to contend with. We are not at war. The Egypt we know now, we're not fighting with any Egypt. We're not fighting with Babylon, but the word of God is the same, that God will be dealing with ancient enemies of his purpose, ancient enemies of his people that are getting revived in this season. As God is dealing with his people and dealing with house, the same way the Lord is dealing with ancient enemies of his people and of his purpose in the nations. So I trust God that, you know, uh, this, this word is going to bring clarity as you read Jeremiah and as we walk through this 47th day and um, go on to see the end of Jeremiah. But don't forget, as we end this journey in 52 days time. That's like in the 52nd day, we are going to close with a communion. And um, as we observe that communion, it is to proclaim that the disaster of this year will not be our portion. That whatever is coming against us in this season, that as we lift up the banner of the blood of Jesus Christ, that we will be safe from trouble because the blood is a token of covenant between God and his people. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Without the blood, the children of Israel would have perished as much as the 
Egyptians. Why was it so? God was trying to say to them, you are not more righteous than the Egyptians. You are not. It was not the Egyptians that brought you to Egypt. It was your own wickedness that made it possible for you to come to Egypt because they sold their brothers, Joseph, and before they sold him, they said, he's our flesh, he's our blood, but they still sold him into slavery. And while they were in Egypt, Egyptians were buying Israelites to spy Israelites. They were buying Israelites to kill Israelites. They were buying Israelites to hurt Israelites. The taskmasters over Israel were not Egyptians. Egyptians said, we're going to deal wisely with them. They hired Israelites to become taskmasters over Israelites. Now think of this. When Moses killed the first Egyptian, nobody was there. The Bible said he looked this way and looked that way. Nobody was there. He killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. The only person who was there was an Israelite. Now, how did Pharaoh hear? How did Pharaoh hear that Moses was killing Egyptians? Because Egypt had paid Israelites to spy Israelites. So God was saying to them, if I want to kill sinners, I will kill everybody because Israelites and Egyptians are sinners before me. But because of the blood, because of the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This blood does not cover the Egyptians. So this season, as we partake of the communion, is like lifting again the token of covenant with our Lord Jesus Christ and saying that whatever disaster is coming, we are safe from it. We are exempted from it. And I pray the Lord will bless you. And the Lord keeps you and makes this year a great year for you. In Jesus' name.